contrast two Epiphone Les Pauls and um, this one here I bought new in 89 so that makes it 30 years old uh, or just over 30 because we're almost into 2020 um, but it's an 89 made in Korea Epiphone Les Paul standard and this one here is a 2005 made in China Epiphone standard and they are both my guitars and there are uh, obviously a lot of similarities between them but there are a, a surprising amount of differences some of them really obvious some of the differences um, I didn't notice until I was literally like holding them side by side and going over them for this video to look for differences. Uh, there are some kind of odd differences like, huh, that's weird. But um, anyway, stick around. And uh, as far as the playing of the instruments, that little bit at the beginning is pretty much all I'm going to be playing because what we're doing is comparing and contrasting the two instruments and they do sound different but this one here I've had for 30 some 30 years a little over and I've changed the electronics in it it doesn't even have the same pots it doesn't even have the same output jack so to really compare how they sound it's kind of pointless uh, <laughs> you know and obviously there's just there's just differences like I mean electronics are going to be different and let's be honest if you're buying an Epiphone Les Paul you either aren't that concerned about um, sort of high price tone and don't get me wrong I if you've seen any of my other videos I have absolutely no issues with um, lower price instruments Okay, but what I'm saying is, if, if you're going to pay 400 bucks for an Epiphone Les Paul, you're either going to swap out the electronics, or you're totally fine with whatever's in them. Um, and not that they sound bad, but you see what I'm saying? So to, to compare and contrast the sound of them, it, that's just kind of ridiculous. So anyway, um, stick around and... We'll see all the differences. Okay, the first super obvious difference is as soon as I pick them up, it's the weight. This 89 weighs a lot less uh, than this pretty hefty 2005 made in China one. So I wrote down a bunch of notes, so if I keep kind of like glancing over here, I'm reading the notes that I wrote. Uh, the weight on it, this one here, uh, the 89, is 8 pounds, uh, 8.44 pounds. So a little less than 8.5 pounds. And this one here is 10.07 pounds. So a little more than 10 pounds. And trust me, when you pick them up, that, what is it, a pound and a half, 
difference or whatever, that is a difference. You definitely notice the difference. And you could say like, oh, well, this one has the pick guard on it. This one has covered pickups, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but this one here has push-pull pots. So the innards are a little bit, um, weigh a little bit more. And it has a strap that I tried to kind of compensate a little bit for just by holding the strap up. But it may have had, but you know what, it, it doesn't really, the difference might be an ounce on either of these with the different electronics, the pick guard, the no pick guard, whatever. So uh, it's definitely the weight is a big difference. So if that matters to you, it's something. The next thing that I noticed on these two guitars is the neck size. And it is pretty substantial. It doesn't seem like it, but it definitely is. Um, the 89 has a, has a thinner neck. So the nut width on the 89 is one inch, one and five eighths inch, inches. One and five eighths, one and five eighths inches, the nut width. The width on this is just shy of one and three quarters. So it's a little bit wider, uh, not a huge difference, but it was certainly enough that when I pick it up, I go, ooh, this neck is wider. And then the actual size of the neck itself is definitely much thicker. Uh, what I did, uh, let me put that down. So what I did was I took a tape measure, okay, put it underneath the strings, right up against the nut, and wrapped it around as tight as I could, and measured sort of the circumference around it. And uh, on the 89, it's four and three eighths inches. And on the 2005, it's four and three quarters inches. So uh, it was actually just slightly more than that. So it's a little bit more than three eighths of an inch bigger, almost a half an inch bigger around on the 2005. So that's fairly substantial. Uh, I did the wrap around again at the 12th fret and it's five and a half on the 89, five and a half inches, and it's five and, uh, did I do, no, it's uh, a little bit, a little bit more than five and a half, so it's like one sixteenth of an inch bigger around. So still a little bit bigger even when you get up to the 12 fret and things. Uh, then, as I was noticing, uh, well, you know, we'll, we'll get to the next thing. Uh, but, so, on this, the neck is definitely bigger. Um, the width of the 12th fret is the same as this. So, for this video, I'm not going to point out the things that are the same. Because, obviously, what we're looking for is sort of the differences. We're going on the assumption that... Um, erroneous assumption or not, the assumption that two Epiphone Les Paul standards are going to have lots of similarities, if not, you would expect kind of all the similarities because it's the same type of guitar. Uh, but, so what we're doing is we're looking for the differences. So, a, a weird thing that I noticed on the neck as I was kind of looking over everything the neck wood, it just it looks to be a different type of wood, but that's, I'm not sure, or whatever. Um, but one thing I definitely noticed is the heel on the 89 is much smaller than the heel on the 2005. So what I'm talking about, yeah, yeah let me put this down, okay, is sort of the width of the heel the 
depth or the amount of heel sticking out from the body. So the it's kind of the width of the heel on the 2005 is bigger. The amount sticking out of the body this way is bigger. And it's further to the back of the body. So the 2005 has a bigger heel. The 89 is a little bit slimmer side to side, a little bit um, less depth towards the back of the body, if that makes sense, and a little less, a little more compact towards the body from the headstock down. So the 2005 was a little more chunky sort of out this way too. So that's definitely hugely noticeable when you're trying to play really like the 13th or 14th fret up. It's definitely noticeable because you, your heel, your hand is right on the heel. The heel is right in the palm of your hand. So that's one thing that I definitely noticed about the size and everything. Another thing that I noticed is this guitar here, and I have no idea if we're going to be able to see it. No, I doubt it. Um, it has like a scarf joint. So there's a seam in the wood that's sort of like a, a curve where another piece of wood for the headstock sort of was spliced in. And I think that obviously that helps for the headstock to have the grain going in the direction that the headstock is angled for the strength of the headstock. This here has a like weird straight line right across here. And I've seen it a lot online uh, um, on a bunch of like Epiphone guitar owners forums in uh, Les Paul owners forums and blah 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 and just researching and things like that. Uh, so I noticed that and it was kind of weird that just the neck construction is so different. Uh, but that's what, that's one thing I noticed. Okay, I wanted to better show the, the neck join that I was talking about. So here, okay, I'm kind of like trying to look in the, the camera viewfinder. Okay, can you see that weird line? Like right here where it looks like it was spliced here. Okay, and that's fine, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't have called it a weird line. Okay, and then here, you can see that it's spliced down here. See that arch? Okay, where that's, where that's sort of spliced on. So it's definitely a different construction for the neck. And as you can see, this neck has like a more pronounced grain and, and different things in it. And this neck here is just a very plain, less kind of grain thing going on. Uh, but whatever. And then while we're here, okay, if you look at the back of this, let's see if I can get it. There we go. That's better. Okay, if you look at the back of that, like see the grain? Like that's awesome grain. Okay, but then... If you look at the side, it's not going to show. I can't show it. Yeah. It's not going to show it. Okay, but on this guitar, the 2005, this back piece is a laminate. It is not the, the wood, the body, the wood. It's really kind of weird. So the wood body is made up of a couple of pieces of wood with a laminate on the back to make it look nice. This guitar, the 2000, uh, the uh, 89, can you see the separation right there? Where it's just two pieces of wood. And there's no laminate on the back or anything. It's actually, it's like three or four pieces of wood, but whatever, uh, on the side. Can you see the line? Yeah, see the line right there? So, whatever. But uh, I just thought I would kind of throw that out there.
as a difference. Okay, so we just talked about the, the body construction. It's just the laminate on the back, it's, it's just another piece of wood, more glue. I, I don't know, it seems like that's more work. It would add expense. So there must be some reason for doing it. I don't know if they're hiding any, anything wood-wise. Um, and again, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know, I really don't care wood is wood. Different pieces of wood can sound different ways. Uh, a, a guitar made out of uh, really expensive mahogany can sound one way. A uh, guitar made out of really cheap oak flooring could sound a different way and you could like the oak flooring guitar better. So I, I'm not really one to be that concerned either way. Uh, but it's just a difference that I noticed, um, kind of a weird thing. Uh, something I noticed about the body is um, measured at right about the um, volume control here, the bridge pickup volume control, the thickness, including the top and everything, on this guitar here is two inches thick. And it's a little bit, excuse me, a little bit hard to tell because of the rounded edges and stuff. Um, but I did measure in a few different spots and this is two inches thick at the edge, the 89. This one here, the 2005, is an eighth inch thinner. So it's actually a thinner body than the 89 and still weighs more. So that's definitely denser wood. And the curve on the back of this body is a sharper curve than the 89. The 89 is a little bit of a smoother, um, a, a larger radius curve. This is a little bit of a sharper radius curve on this uh, body. Um, now, now we're getting to some of the, the weirder little differences that don't really seem to make a whole lot of uh, difference. Or really sense. I, I don't know why, but whatever. Um, so, if I measured from the output jack to the strap button on the 2005, uh, sorry, from the center, from the center of the output jack to the center of the strap button, which the strap button is right at that center line of the top. So the strap button on both, I checked in there both center lines, so that's say a good place to keep. Um, it's the same on both guitars, uh, a good place to start. The uh, output on this is three quarters of an inch, on the 2005, is three quarters of an inch further away from this from the strap button, from the central line at the top. So the 2005 is like here, the 89 is three quarters of an inch closer to the strap button. I don't know what that means or what that, what, what difference it makes, but there it is. <laughs> uh, the other thing I noticed is the um, neck tone control On this guitar, the 89, it's not really like a, a, a rhombus or parallelogram, whatever shape. It's a little sort of lopsided. And on this, it's a much more even spacing. So on the 89, this knob is more here. And on the 2005, it's more in with the other three knobs. I don't know why or what difference that makes, but there it is, it's a difference. Another thing I noticed that was a little bit weird, I measured from the, because the bridge, the intonation is going to be different on both, I measured from the center of the post 
Okay, so the center line of the, the mounting posts to the pickup itself. And um, I don't remember exactly wh if I measured, um, actually, you know what, I, I do remember. I measured from the center of the bridge post to the center of the pickup height adjustment screw. So you would assume the mounting post on the bridge for both guitars and the um, height adjustment for the pickups on both guitars would be the same, same spots and everything, uh, because that's just how the, the guitar is built and designed and everything, the scale length, all of that there wouldn't be a lot of fluctuation there. Uh, on the uh, 2005, the, both pickups are a little closer to the bridge than the 89. The neck pickup is just very slight. But the bridge pickup is about an eighth of an inch closer. So on the 89, it's an eighth of an inch further away from the bridge. So all else being equal, the 89 is going to have a little bit of a thicker, rounder, mellower tone. This is going to have a little bit um, brighter, uh, sort of twangier kind of a tone to it. Everything else being equal, which of course it never is. But nonetheless, uh, the pickup selector surround, if I know the one on my 89 is stock, if this is stock, I didn't buy this one new. Um, it's a thicker plastic. I don't know if that matters. And it's um, the text is heat stamped in. On the 89, it's really barely heat stamped in. It's actually uh, rubbing away and, and wearing off in spots. I don't know if you can... See, like especially on the rhythm, it's definitely wearing off in spots. But what are you going to do? Then there's one other thing that I noticed that was uh, interesting. As I'm playing the two, the um, bridge height on the 89 is lower, closer to the body, than it is on the 2005. So, it's really hard to tell without like the right tools, but it looks like the neck angle on the 89 is less of a severe angle. The 2005 has more of a severe angle. So you might think, well, a, a, an eighth of an inch at the bridge isn't that big of a deal, but the angle times the distance Okay, so if we have an angle, say like a, a one degree angle, okay, an inch out, it's only going to be like a millimeter, okay. Five inches out, it's now going to be a bit bigger. Eight inches out, 24 and three quarter inches out, now a one degree difference makes quite a difference in the the bridge height, because you know what I'm saying, as the angle travels, it's getting wider and wider and wider and taller and taller and taller. You know, Pythagorean theorem and all that stuff. So that was another thing that I noticed. Um, well, and then obviously this has the Grover tuners. I'm just looking at this now, like, this has Grover tuners, and there's actually some slop in them. I was um, surprised, because in the 70s everybody upgraded to the Grover tuners. Uh, this has the fake Clusen style uh, with the plastic knobs and everything. Um, these pick up, these, um, sorry, uh, these tuners, I like, uh, they're more lightweight, it's going to change the tone a little bit for better or for worse, who knows, but um, I like them. It just has that sort of vintage vibe to it. And uh, I believe that's about it. So hopefully this was interesting for everybody and uh, I'll send you off with a little bit of guitar playing.
which are messing around. <laughs>